And we are live, Sabrina. It's so great to see you today. Michelle Ricketts here from Cohesion Services out of Vancouver, Canada. And I have Sabrina Morris, the adventurist here with me. Hi, Sabrina, great to see you. Hi, Michelle, thank you. Thank you for putting this together and inviting me. Well, I am thrilled to have you on with me today. And I wanted to start by, first of all, tell us where you are, first of all. Right now I'm in Colorado, in the United States. Excellent, and I'm in Canada. So we come at this from different perspectives, which is excellent. And we're gonna be talking about travel today because I am I work with customers, with clients, businesses to help them grow and scale. But Sabrina, she's got a fun job. She works with clients to help them travel. And yes, I did say travel, everyone. <laughs> It's 2019 and we're talking about travel, but we're talking about traveling into 2021 and we're going to get into that a little bit. But first, I want to ask Sabrina where she's traveled this year, because I know you have. Yes. So 2020, I know all of us are dealing with COVID. We are on lockdown. We are being stressed in one spot. How do you handle it? Well, I couldn't, guys. I'm just going to be honest. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to get on a plane and get out of here. So I've been to Mexico for my birthday month. Normally, I would spend the whole month in Europe. This year, I got on the plane, went to Mexico. And two weekends ago, I got back from a spa in Arizona at Countback. <sighs> Woo! Oh, you go, girl. Tell me about this spa. <laughs> We're well, all envious. Well, the spa was great because I'm sure you guys can guess I got a detox treatment. I wanted to detox COVID. I wanted to detox crazy. I wanted to detox it all. Paraffin wax on the hand, but they use oil this time, which was nice. Nice, relaxing oil. Nice. Oh, it was, it just, we just needed it. Totally needed it. Excellent, excellent. And so you went to the spa, I and mean, how was it? Was it busy? How were were there a lot of people there? What did it look like? Were people wearing masks? Well, everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's Good. wearing masks. A lot of people are on lockdown in California when I was going, but because Arizona was more open to having people come there, it almost had the 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 lady at the front desk. She was a little confused because so many people from California were coming there. She was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. So it was, it was interesting. It was not full capacity. There was plenty of room. I mean, you could sit around the fire pit and there may have been 10 people around the fire pit. Yeah. Uh, I, that was probably 20% of the capacity there, you know? Nice. Well, it it gave you something to relax and enjoy and still be physically distant and, and wear a mask, but you were still, you still felt comfortable. Yes, right. very comfortable. And the and this particular place was on a golf course. So right. People on the golf course weren't really wearing masks because they were so far apart from each other playing golf. Yeah. So if you wanted to have a mask break, you could just go for a walk. Well, I went for a walk alongside the golf course and just just enjoyed the space. Nice, nice. Well, that sounds like it was somewhat rejuvenating and you seem calm and cool and collected. So I think it did its job. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you talk to clients all the time about travel. How concerned are clients? Because I know in the United States, I think people are traveling. You've got a lot more states than we have provinces and territories. People are traveling a bit more than we are here in Canada. So how concerned are your clients? What are you hearing from them about traveling? Well, a lot of people are shocked that I've actually gone on trips, just to be honest. You right. Know, they don't really know what to expect. Then there are some people that I run across know that Mexico is open and they want people to come there and they are taking the precautions so once i got to mexico and got to the resort it was a five-star resort beautiful right. property they took my luggage from me and decontaminated my luggage interesting yes i like that and then as i walked into the building they had this huge archway and as you walk through it spritzed me 
to okay. decontaminate my clothes as well as took my temperature. Now you didn't know that it was taking your temperature so you wouldn't freak out and get all like, oh, for those who are like, oh my gosh, I just had a panic attack and my temperature spiked through the roof. So they right. didn't tell you that part. And then before you even get to the little spritzer, they had a foot wash whereby mm. you step into this little puddle and right. decontaminate the soles of your shoes before you go to the resort. Now I was happy about that. Because as a rule before COVID, I always spritzed down my own luggage to mm -hmm. keep it clean because it was in the belly of the plane and all kinds of things ride in that belly. And then they also had hand sanitizers in your room. Right. They also had hand wipes. Okay. And, and there was one other thing. Oh, a bug. Because in Mexico, you could get bit by bugs. Right, so right. That was nice. And the rooms were sealed off before you go in they were not at full capacity mm -hmm. so it made it nice because if you like to play in the pool and relax in the pool each of the little condo units if you will right own private pool in addition uh, to the larger pool right oh so this particular resort was great because if i wanted to i could have a whole pool to myself because it was it, it was great mm -hmm. Really. Now you're working with clients, so your clients are traveling. Sometimes they used to do for conferences. Sometimes it was for individual travel. Sometimes it was reward or recognition trips. Do you feel the resort takes care of this type of client differently than if somebody's just going on a personal holiday? How do you see the difference? Oh, that's a that's a really good question. This particular resort treated everyone the same because mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to sit in the bar area and everybody was wearing their masks and they had a group that they were talking to about purchasing the different units. So I like to overhear and listen to the conversation and there were people from all over the world coming to that location to purchase those particular units that were designated right. to be owned by uh, Okay. So that was fun to watch. And then right. everybody wore their masks. There was about 20 people in the room. And then they did a tour. So it looked like they were very hands-on. They they gave them all drinks, treated them special. So nice. it looks like they treated everyone the same way. And, and we'll put the caveat out there to say that, you know, not all resorts will necessarily do the same thing. But it sounds like this resort really did go over and above to put measures in place to make people comfortable. And that's something that you would talk to your clients about if and when they're going to book, whether it's now or post COVID is what we're focusing on. You would have that conversation with your clients about what they're looking for and know what the resort would offer, correct? Well, yes and yes. So one key piece is the the particular company that I promote, they have a team of excellent, well-skilled travel agents that sit in a room and vet every mm. place that we go to. They're about making dreams become a reality. So I never, I probably would not have taken the trip to Mexico if this did not show up on my portal because I'm okay. a four or five star resort. I knew that it had already been vetted. And this particular resort would take extra care of us just like they did. I had a conversation with another friend who had uh, friends that went on another trip to Mexico. Right. Was not through our program. So their particular resort was not vetted. They said that the pool was too crowded. They did not have the experience that I had. So it's mm. very important to make sure that you trust the people who are vetting the locations that you're going to be staying in. Absolutely. And that's something that you, because you have the relationship with your client, they trust you and they work with you and you help them to understand what they're looking for in their experience, but also be comfortable about the experience. And that, that word comfortable is so key now uh, as people are, as we get to the end of 2019 and into 2020 as people travel. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Because and another thing that is really comfortable is that the airports have been the cleanest that I've ever seen them. The floors were clean. 
Oh, so yes. Around you, so crowded around you, which is great. And then in addition, when you got on the plane, I flew Southwest. And so when I got on the plane at that time in September, they required the middle seat to be empty. Ah, uh, okay. Another hack that I like to do, even though you can see that they're promoting that they clean their planes before they're loaded. I travel with the little packs of wipes. Right. They'll let you take. And I wipe down the seat that I'm sitting, all my touch points, as well as my tray, to make sure that in case they left anything behind, I was going to pick it up. So whatever each of you need to do to make you feel comfortable, now you do have to wear your mask the whole time you're on the plane. Right. If you don't, the, you will hear the flight attendant make an announcement that says, don't make us the bad guy. <laughs> the little acknowledgement that you would wear the mask the whole trip, unless you're eating or drinking. Yes, yes. Then, then they expect that mask to go right back up so that you can protect everywhere, everyone else around you. And and nobody wants to be the one that they, I'm sure they don't do it by seat, but could you imagine if they said, could Mr. Jones in seat three please put on your mask? Well, <laughs> I'm sure they don't do that, but. <laughs> well, you know, it's really funny. I know we're laughing about it, but I had I had uh, noise, noise canceling headphones on and the, I took a lady with me to the spa so she can experience what it's like to travel our style and how the places are vetted. And so she gets on the plane and there was another gentleman that sat across the aisle one way up that decided not to wear his mask. Mm. So she asked him nicely and I wasn't paying attention. I was in my you know own little, I'm on a plane mode. And so she asked him, sir, can you put your mask up? He ignored her. Oh. So he was like, oh my gosh. And he was coughing without his mask. And she was like, I don't have to sit here. She started to panic a little. And I'm like, oh, once I got out of my relaxed state, I'm like, all you do is push the flight attendant button. And I did the sign, you know, no mask. And all of a sudden, all the flight attendants started to converge onto this one spot. The next thing I know, this gentleman pulled that mask up and looked like, I'm not guilty. And he knew he was. So, right, right. So it's very interesting. You can actually get someone to wear their mask on the plane without even really having to engage. You can ask them nice. They don't comply. Just push the flight attendant button, turn it back off because they don't like it when it just stays on like that. Right, right. They will address the issue. You don't have to do anything. Just sit there and watch it unfold. And you make a great point, Sabrina, because we've I'm sure we've all seen the videos where somebody has engaged with somebody and asked them to put their mask on and the person has refused and that it becomes it turns into an altercation. Yeah. So you don't need to go through that. As you said, the best thing is let the flight attendants deal with it and they'll and and hopefully in most cases, like that gentleman, people will concede, so to speak, mm -hmm. and put the mask on. And if not, the flight attendants are the ones who will handle that and and we we thank them for the work that they do yeah. I, I have a friend who who flies the friendly skies and yes we we thank them all the time for the work that they do so it's yeah. excellent yes because they're on the front lines pretty much you know absolutely absolutely different type it's not the type that we talk about all the time but there's so many other people out there and we'll take that this moment to thank everyone on the front lines during COVID and helping us get through this. But yes. we, we see some different things in, in Canada to the US, I know, and even in across different provinces, across different states in the different countries, that things are happening differently. We've seen some lockdowns. I know even one of our provinces just went back into a more severe lockdown. We had some additional closures and things where I am as well. And you see different things happening across different states. So how do you feel this is going to affect people as they things open up and we start to travel again next year? How do you think people, that's going to be different? You know, that's a good question. And, and when we were sitting around the fireplace, we were talking about that a little bit. Our community, we're, we're kind of, you know, some of the people, they were shocked. I took my first trip in September. They had been traveling on a trip every month since wow. COVID hit. Wow. So we talked a little bit and said, you know, there are going to be people out there that even though the, the doors or the gates open up for travel, for those of us who are really tired of being in the box, they're going to just be like, put me on the first plane. Mm. There are going to be those who are going to be a little skeptical 
a little, and I hate this word fear, mm -hmm. a little fearful of going. And, and I wanted to say something to help each of you in that. A lot of times, fear will keep you from doing what you want to do. Absolutely, it does. And for me, it's just a lie from the enemy. That's how I see it. Fear is, a, And you need to be comfortable for you. So don't let anybody push you into doing something. You know, don't get on a plane just because Sabrina said it. You know, get on a plane when you're ready to go and experience what you want to experience. And so that's that's the most most important part is focusing on stepping out when you're ready to go. I wouldn't say Absolutely. don't let fear paralyze you mm -hmm. or give you a uh, where you have to take meds just to function because I had a family member that went through that as well. Mm -hmm. Find that balance. Even if that means, you know, you take four packs of wipes and you wipe everything down three times, you know, whatever it is to yes. be comfortable to get out of that, that, Absolutely. that zone. And I would say, Sabrina, that's a great point. And that's the same with life. I mean, I'm not a fearful person. I'm, a, I'm more a take charge and move forward type of person. Yes, you are. But I think that a lot of people do fear, find that they're fearful in some cases. And what you're saying makes so much sense for travel, but for all aspects of life, you have to be comfortable. People have to be comfortable with where they are and what they're doing. And this is this is no different. So as we come out of COVID, that's a great point that you make about people being comfortable. And people would be comfortable at different levels and at different times. You have, there'll be the whole conversation around taking the vaccine, not taking the vaccine. I was just on a call with a friend from the UK. They've already started rolling out, as most people know, they did that uh, day before yesterday, I believe. And so other countries and the states as well will all have to figure out what that looks like and who gets when and what you do. So people have to be comfortable with where they are. That's a right. great, great, great point. So what do you see um, changing in the face of travel as we move forward again from some of the things that you've mentioned already? But what do you see changing in the face of travel, working with your clients or how you're going to work with them or how they travel what are your thoughts? Well, one thing I was thinking, because for those of us who have not taken any trips, and once the walls come down and they're like, okay, everybody, you can go for it. We're taking people into Europe. One thing I see is, is basic supply and demand. So all the people that I'm talking to now, I said, this now is the time to book your trips for next year, for 2021, while the price is lower because people are wanting you to come. They're wanting you to book. I'm telling people do not wait until the last minute because what's going to happen, I'm guessing, but the airfare prices are probably going to go up The because of demand. Everybody's going to put demand and everybody's been, everybody meaning the airlines, America, all the different airlines out there, they have had to have that space in between. Mm -hmm. So when I came back from the spa a couple of weekends ago, I was talking to the flight attendant and she said, beginning December 1st, they mm -hmm. were going to allow that empty seat to be occupied. And I was like, right. oh, I like that space, you know? Yes, so, yes. So it's starting. Yes. My, my input or advice to anyone, if you know you want to go somewhere for 20 21 start looking at that now start creating your bucket list now for 2021 because you're just coming out of a session where they're telling you you can't go on a trip mm -hmm. and if you're concerned about going now one thing i would like to see the airlines and the airports continue to do and that's clean their plane <laughs> they should have been doing that all along and when you say clean you mean the covid clean so wiping everything yeah. down doing all of that what they weren't doing before yes Right. right down even the airports i need you to clean that area where we go through tsa is one of the filthiest areas even still to me now still filthy i need them to clean that go through with the um different materials they have to clean 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 it clean it 
I, I don't know what else to say. Keep yeah. it clean, clean. That's all you need to do going forward. Clean. This is not something we're just doing for 2020. You need to carry it into 21, 22, so that we don't go backwards. Right, right. And for some some people, it's maybe good to take that same advice into their lives as well. <laughs> so. Very true, because I've been accused sometimes is going a little bit overboard, but I've always thought of, I want it clean. Now, one thing I did do for 2020 in my room is I got a UV light. Mm -hmm. And in Mexico, every night, I would UV all of my sheets, pillows, everything. A nice Absolutely. UV. And you can you can UV the touch points, but I had already sprayed those down. <laughs> <laughs> you went that extra measure. And I know one of our local companies here actually, um, as a pivot, they're a luggage luggage, luggage manufacturer and producer, um, boutique luggage, amazing stuff. Uh, they actually created and developed a, a, a wand, a hand um, wand that you could use. So when we when we put this up, I'll actually put their contact and link information so people can can take a look at that if they want as well. And I think it's ninety nine dollars, so it's not expensive, and you could you can take it all over the place, use it wherever you like. So I'll put that up when we when we put this uh, when we put this on as well. Now you mentioned in there with people looking ahead, and I want to touch on one point because I think a lot of our viewers were, and we'll say hi to Gerard, and, and he joined us a little while ago, but uh, are, are gonna ask themselves, well, we were, we, we were gonna travel before, that was canceled at the beginning of COVID, we lost money, or we didn't have insurance, or the airline didn't give us money back. So what are your thoughts? Yes, you're saying to start to look at their bucket list or start to see where they wanna travel in 2021, but what would you say to that point where people talk about the loss potential? Well, see, the, the I did not have that issue, the loss potential, because of the company. And I don't know if this might be a good time to give the my website for people to take a look at how I travel. Sure. Because 2019, I decided to pick up my photography skills again. I used to get awards in high school and photography done a long time ago. But so I said, you know what, how are you going to leverage photography going forward? It's great with the travel promoter. It's great at, with, with what you're doing now. So I booked a trip to Iceland that nice. was going to go into the innermost parts of Iceland so that I can photograph it. Right. So going to be, it was, it was a crash course in photography. I had to learn because some of those shots are one in a lifetime. You don't want to ever miss it. You catch the aurora borealis. You don't want to have it not on your camera when you get back. So what happened was the company canceled our trip. All of my money was right in my account. I didn't have to do anything. Oh, I looked at my email. They said, oh, we canceled it. And your money is in your account. Great. So then they placed it out there again. And I thought, yes, I get another chance to go. Booked it again. They canceled again because of COVID. Mm. And they wanted us to be safe, too. It right. Was two, it was twofold. Absolutely. So I was like, hmm. now they have it out there again for March of next year. And I'm thinking, should I book that or just wait? Because I don't want them to care. I can't take it anymore. I want to go to Iceland. Now, I will remind people, for those who have just joined us, we are talking travel for business here. So this this may be a little different for personal travel, not traveling for business, but it's businesses that Sabrina works with and books businesses travel, um, which could be personal. Again, it could be somebody who's doing it for a rewards or recognition purpose, could be for traveling on business, could be just for relaxation. But she works with customers that are that are business owners opposed to individuals. And I'll just put that out there. So that's what we're referring to as actually business clients. Now, this the size, what size of businesses are you wor usually working with, Sabrina? So the size of businesses that I'm working with are any businesses or CEOs or VPs of HR that can actually make a call or make a decision that have a minimum of 50 employees where they want to touch their lives. Because right now people are going through COVID. Now they have to, in America, they have to homeschool their kids. So they're finding out that their kids may not be as good as they thought they were when they were in school. So they're dealing with that. And one lady reminded me, she said, Sabrina, don't forget about the fourth and the fifth child, which could be the husband in some cases. <laughs> so for those employees 
who want to love, I call it the love gift, loving on their employees to say, you know what, guys, 2020 has been tough. We have an amazing benefit that we're going to add to your package just to let you know that we appreciate you. And that will give their employees access to these experiences I, I was talking about earlier. Excellent. So that's one piece. And then any company who's in the sales industry who are saying, you know what, my team hit the ball out the park and it was 2020 and they still hit their numbers. We also can talk about creating an incentive program around travel for them as well. Mm, interesting. And that's your, uh, the recognition. I mean, I, I have a background in sales and yes, that's something that it's always nice to have that incentive trip uh, yeah. or we're working towards something in, in some cases. So it's great yeah. that, that you mentioned that as well. Well, we're only got a little bit left. We're going to, we're going to end us soon. Anything that you haven't talked about from a travel perspective that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I think you brought it up earlier Dale, when we were getting ready to share with the audience and that's three words for next year. And I was joking and I just said, freedom, freedom, freedom. And you start laughing. So it would be great for each of you to take a moment right now. And I know COVID has been crazy. It has been great for many people and it has been challenging for many as well. Think about those three words that's going to take you into 2021 and start now. Don't wait until 2021 goes. Start now. I said freedom, 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 and also threw victory out there. So start thinking about today, right now, how can I be free? If that means going outside, taking a walk for an hour or 30 minutes, go take the dog for a run, go throw the ball, do something to make you free right now. And if you want that victory, start writing that list. Our instructor in one of the classes I had earlier, because in Zoom, you get to get in a lot of training without, you know, travel time and all those other things. And he said, start setting obtainable goals that Absolutely. will give that victory. And one simple example he did, which I thought was like, really? But he had a good point. And he was like, everybody just, Take a deep breath. Yes. And exhale. That was a goal. You achieved it. But start small and then build up. So, for example, because of COVID, I have not been drinking the gallon of water. I've been hitting the numbers. So I said, okay, in the morning when you get up, first thing, hit the water. Little things. Start baby steps. Don't wait until 2021. Because anything can happen between now and then, God forbid. But start now. That would be my two cents for everyone going 2021. That's excellent. And we always, with my clients, they talk about goals. And SMART goals is something that a lot of people talk about. So you want to make sure that they're specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, and um, uh, realistic, and time-bound. So that's where the SMART comes from. But that's great, Sabrina. Absolutely. And you're right. My three words is what I usually ask you. So it was great that you shared those. And wonderful to be here with you here today. We'll post a few things afterwards as we get this live uh, completed, and we'll post those in the comments for you. Thank you for joining us, and thank you so much, Sabrina, for being a guest today. Continue to have your adventures and enjoy, and we'll talk again soon. And thank you so much for having me. You're very, very welcome. See you soon. Bye.